Welcome back. So here we're looking at the aileron box, which has now had the center of it um, put in with a little C-clip there and a couple of washers just to stop it from moving back and forth. So that's all fitted in and it's ready to sit into uh, the keel of the fuselage now. And the stick uh, slides into that hole there and is locked in place by the other pin that slides through the middle of it. So it's a bit of a um, puzzle, but it's a good way of locking it out and also sealing pressure off from the outside of the cabin. And meanwhile the guys are um, putting the core there in the two different panels of that first door that I was working on. And as you can see getting it pressed in but then they um, bagged it as well um, to make sure it was uh, held down nicely. And here Jeff is creating some stands here for the first of the four plane uh, spar molds so can, they can sit flat on a table. And uh, there's the aileron box now going into the keel. And you can see it's got the plate on there behind there and the cables are uh, run through there or the cables run through there to the pulleys on the floor. It's a bit difficult to see what's going on there, but you, hopefully you can understand what's happening there. And back in the cabin, this is what it looks like there. So there's the stick. Um, and this is all happening uh, because Jim's in the process of getting all the cables for the aileron controls all uh, finished off. And back to the doors, this is the left side one now, and you can see I've created a couple of plates there, or four of them, to help uh, hold the window in place uh, when I bonded into the door frame. And here's the other door after the guys removed the bag and the peel ply and such. So there's the core in there now, and so the next step is just to do a layup over the top of that to close it out. And here's Jim working on finishing off the lines for the brakes that run up through the gear legs there. So um, he's just creating some short lines there and putting the fittings there um, that will hook up to the lines coming down through the keel and closing out the other hole that we had before that we weren't using as well and this is what it looks like once he's run those uh, other extra cables there or extra brake lines I should say so the brakes go up there and then run up the center of the legs there that have been they've been gun drilled before they were bent so and then the line connects to the end there and Zach and Jeremy here are closing out that uh, core there in the door. And you can see they've already done the bottom section and got that with the peel ply already in place. And just working on the upper section there, getting it all nicely set up. And there's a bit of a mess there because of the door handle in there, so it's not just a clean layup. We've got to um, allow for the door handle movement. And uh, that's what it looks like once the peel plies in, and that one didn't need to be bagged again. It was just just had to have the peel ply on it because the bag already had um, pushed the f the core in there nicely. And one of the things we still need to do is create a fixture to hold the four plane while it's being constructed. So th this is what you're looking at here is one of the s the upper surfaces of the four plane, and there you can see uh, the four ribs that make up the four plane, and then there's the two spars, the main spar or the rear one, center one and then a forward spar. So we need to kind of support all that um, as it gets bonded together so it doesn't have a twist or a bend or anything like that in it and it's all nice and true. So um, how we're going to do that is similar to how I created the jig for the wings and the winglets. So this is basically what it's going to look like. It's just a steel frame um, that has a bunch of supporting pieces that are milled out to the shape of the uh, four plane skin itself and in the middle it has a couple of cutouts there that will support the uh, spar or the both of the spars in three different places for each of them so everything can sort of be laid in place there and then um, bonded in and and not have to worry about it you know getting twisted and that's basically what it's going to look like there so steel frame and then these uh, black sort of um, carbon uh, or glass um, things that we mill out with the machine that you'll see uh, shortly. And here you can see the guys have cut the boards already. So there's uh, eight of the taller ones and then three of the shorter ones for the center there. And they're in the process of uh, cutting and just cleaning off the ends there of the steel. And we're just using one by one steel again for this. Um, and they just clean that, that off uh, in preparation for welding up the whole framework which will probably be uh, tomorrow I guess. And there's all the cross pieces now ready to be welded up. So it's just the long bits now that have actually already been cut and just need to be laid out on the table and uh, positioned so they can be welded. And uh, meanwhile um, this um, these stands here have been sort of leveled off yep. and cut as 
carefully as we can but we're going to put the that whole thing up on the machine and then uh, just run the machine along the edges there to get it level and lastly uh, here's my door there so ready to put the window in place and uh, and bond it in so it's looking what the last look on the inside of that frame looks like there and I put a couple little fences there as well because we're going to probably squirt some foam in the top section there just to reinforce it a little little more uh, after we've you know got the window bonded in here and that's what it looks like there when it's all uh, setting up there so the high sole in around the flanges and a bunch of clamps on there and then of course my little alignment jigs that I created this time to make sure that the window gets lined up nicely so that's all setting up now and uh, one last thing so on Saturday I went in and uh, ran the engine with it that, that uh, other uh, injector profile that I had that, that Bosch uh, sorry that Motec had um, since put in their software and, and it actually it wasn't really good for our thing it didn't run, run the engine well at all so I'm going to stick with the profile that we have right now maybe tune it some more later on um, but you know the engine's running pretty good and the next thing is to get some more of those um, uh, temp sensors in there so I can just see exactly what the temps are on the exhaust Anyway, that's our update for the first half of this week, and thanks again for watching.